That's right, Taylor Nicole Dean is back and she made a very, very brave post over on Instagram. And as a recovering addict myself, I wanted to explain why this is such a big deal and what all of us can learn from it. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, something I like to do is when a YouTuber is out there talking about something that I'm very passionate about, which are things like addiction recovery, the opioid crisis, mental health in general, I like to shine a spotlight on that. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you are somebody who wants to learn more about the current opioid crisis going on in our country right now, feel free to check the video I did just last night about John Oliver from last week tonight's new episode talking about the opioid crisis. I'll link that up there in the info card, all right? So, Taylor and Nicole Dean, she is back. She just made um, an Instagram post with uh, notes kind of explaining where she's been, what she's been through and everything like that. I wanted to discuss that and I'm coming from a place not as a licensed therapist or anything like that, but like I mentioned, I am a recovering opioid addict. Um, recently, I also shared my story about my opioid addiction and recovery, and I was one of the very fortunate people where I didn't progress from prescription opioids to heroin, but I was about this close. So I'm speaking from my own experience, but I also worked in a drug and alcohol addiction treatment center for a little over three years, and I have a lot of experience in that realm. So I wanted to talk about some things that she discussed. So if you're interested in learning more about that or you are somebody trying to get clean or you are clean, or if you have a loved one who's trying to get clean, I just wanted to explain a few things that she touched on that helped her out with her own recovery, all right? So those of you who don't know this whole story, Taylor Nicole Dean, she is a channel and she has a lot of animals, a lot of pets, uh, I think specifically reptiles. Um, but yeah, anyways, when I was focusing more on YouTubers and talking about that, I had a lot of requests about that. Um, a lot of people wanted me to talk about Taylor Nicole Dean and hoarding, but like I mentioned, as somebody in recovery as well and seeing some of the, uh, Taylor's videos talking about addictive personality and some struggles that she had, you know, it's something that I think I only touched on once when she opened up about her addiction. But anyways, um, I, I hope to to increase some awareness and some empathy for a lot of people who don't understand. Because in Taylor Nicole Dean's first note, the first picture on there, she talked about how she was making this post because of all the awful things she saw people were saying to her about her addiction and how she wants to be someone, you know, giving a voice to this. And she was very fortunate to have a support group. And yes, like the addiction stigma is absolutely awful. So like, I get it. I understand from the perspective of somebody else from the outside looking in and Taylor Nicole Dean having all of these animals, saying how it's unfair to them and all of these things. So I'm a recovering drug addict. I've been clean for over six and a half years. I have a son, right? Addiction is an, an awful, terrible disease that it actually takes over the primal part of your brain that is responsible for survival. So basically, the way our brain prioritizes things for those of us who develop an addiction to substances or even process addictions like uh, gambling, shopping, sex, love, things like that, it puts that on the top of our priority list, right? So. There's a lot of parents out there who develop an addiction and they aren't taking proper care of their children. It is not fair to the children in any way, shape or form. So I understand where people are upset about Taylor Nicole Dean's addiction taking priority over the care of her animals, but we need to understand that this is a disease and we need to quit shaming people who are struggling with this and encourage them to get help like Taylor Nicole Dean did. So again, it's very brave of her to open up and share this story. This is, very, this is very vulnerable for a lot of people. And like, I'm so proud of her because for me, it took me two years. It took me two years to open up publicly about my addiction recovery. And she's just boom, right there. Because she wants to help people. She wants to decrease the stigma. She wants people to have the ability to open up and talk about this thing. And that is just absolutely amazing. So in her Instagram post, she talks about the treatment method that she used. She went to an outpatient treatment center. So the treatment center that I was working at, we had all levels of care, okay? So we had detox, we had residential slash inpatient treatment, we had partial hospitalization, which is we had like a nursing staff and everything. We had doctors, psychiatrists um, who could disperse medications. Then there's intensive outpatient program, then there's outpatient program. So me personally, when I got clean, I just went through a sober living house, which isn't a treatment center. It's 
kind of like treatment, but not. I've made some videos about this when I talked about Wendy Williams. But anyways, the only treatment I ever went to was um, uh, an inpatient detox facility. And I was only there for, I think, four or five days, right? So outpatient is typically for people with less severe addictions. Taylor Nicole Dean talks about how she was using uh, China White and it was, you know, not, not as potent as like black tar or heroin mixed with fentanyl. So outpatient may have been a good option for her. If you're somebody with a very severe addiction, if you're somebody who struggles with chronic relapse, I highly, highly, highly recommend an inpatient program because for a lot of us, we aren't even safe for ourselves. So an outpatient, you can travel um, from home to the treatment center or you might be living in sober living, going to outpatient and things like that. That. At the treatment center I was working at, you had to be doing well in, you know, residential treatment in order to um, reach the next step, which is outpatient. So that might be a good option for some people. One of the recommendations I have is talk to an addiction specialist. There are different criteria that they use, like the ASAM criteria, where they assess your addiction and they talk about different things in your life, like your, your dependency to it, your withdrawal potential, your relapse history, what kind of support system you have. And based on all that, they'll say, okay, I think you should do residential, I think you should do outpatient and all that stuff. So talk to a professional before you make this decision, okay? Because I've seen many people make the mistake of doing outpatient when their addiction was more severe and they needed inpatient. So it led to a relapse and if they were lucky, they got into an outpatient and realized that. So the next thing is Taylor Nicole Dean, um, she's on Suboxone and she talks about Vivitrol. So she talks about how this blocks the opioid receptors. Yes, Suboxone is a great, great, great medication. What it does is it also helps with withdrawal. Typically, um, I personally, and there's a bunch of different uh, opinions on this, and again, I am not a doctor or anything like that. This is just from my experience and what I've seen with people. Typically with Suboxone, I recommend a, a pretty quick taper, okay? So Suboxone helps getting off of opioids and it also blocks opioid receptors. Then she mentions the Vivitrol shot. So Vivitrol is different than Suboxone. So Vivitrol, what that is, is it's an antagonist, okay? So it prevents you from getting high, all right? Suboxone is a partial opioid. So some people get on Suboxone and they stay on it way too long and then they can have withdrawals from that too. At my treatment center, we would taper people off within a week or two. So Vivitrol is a 28-day shot. Some insurance companies cover this, some do not. I personally, when I got clean, something that saved my life was naltrexone. So naltrexone is like Vivitrol, but it's a pill form. So I would take that pill every single day. The reason I did it is because I didn't have insurance. So I would take that once a day. Some people prefer Vivitrol if they have the option because what some people would do is if they got naltrexone, they just wouldn't take the pill that day and would get high, all right? So with a Vivitrol shot, it lasts for about 28 to 30 days. There are some other medications that are out there where they give you the shot and it's like Vivitrol, but it lasts for like three to six months. Some people prefer that. But naltrexone saved my life because what it did for me is it helped to reduce my cravings. From my experience talking with other people who have used naltrexone or Vivitrol, for, not for everybody it reduces cravings. For me it did and that's why it saved my life until I was able to kind of um, get my recovery kick-started and then I was able to start working a 12-step program. Now, years later, I'm in therapy. I still go to 12-step programs and things like that. But now Trexone and Vivitrol are great options. Talk to your insurance provider. For me, I was taking uh, the pill form with no insurance and this was six and a half years ago. So I think I was paying like 50 or $60 a week, something like that, all right? So um, the shot, the actual Vivitrol shot, I think without insurance, depending on where you're getting it from, I've heard it of being upwards of $1,200 or $1,500, but with insurance, it'll cover some of that cost, okay? So yeah, lastly, I just wanna talk about like, I really hope that the community is supportive of Taylor Nicole Dean. Again, like I, my hat is off to anybody, anybody, not even just YouTubers or celebrities, but anybody who has a willingness to open up about their struggles, because what that does is, it creates this kind of chain reaction. And what we see is, okay, this person opened up about it, maybe it's okay for me to open up about it too. And again, it took me two years. So I don't like say like, go run around and like scream from the rooftops like, hey, hey, I'm a recovering drug addict. Like you don't have to do that. But 
just remember that it can help other people. Like two years ago, when or when I had two years clean and I first opened up about my addiction publicly, so many people thanked me and that's kind of what encouraged me to start working in treatment. It's something that encouraged me to start this YouTube channel and talk about Talk about all the things that we don't like talking about. So I'm super proud of Taylor Nicole Dean. Um, she gives some um, advice in her post too. She opens up the door to say if anybody wants to reach out to her. Like she talks about uh, in her post, um, like, uh, you know, if you don't have money for treatment, there's 12 step programs and everything like that. She's looking great, looking awesome. And I wish her continued success one day at a time in her recovery. And for any of you out there who want to learn more about addiction, like I have a free course about the science of addiction. It's a course that I taught in the treatment center that I was working at. It's now available for free. So if you want to check it out, go check it out. It'll help you understand the way the brain works when it comes to addiction. All right. But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to sign up for Patreon and get access to our monthly Q&A, some other perks and things like that, you can click or tap right there. All right. Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.